UW Harris Canada Games Center in Red Deer, Alberta, as athletes warming up to take part in the 1,000 meter quarter finals. As we welcome you inside the TSN studios, I'm Kayla Gray. Day seven of the Canada Winter Games in Red Deer, Alberta. When it comes to speed skating, this is where we learned of the names such as Charles Hamlin, who would go on to take part in the Olympics. Well, we'll get back to that in just a moment's time, but plenty of action took place on Thursday, including artistic swimming, wheelchair basketball, and table tennis. Let's get you to some highlights from Wednesday by Athlon, starting with the women's 3x6 kilometer relay. It was Team Alberta capturing gold here with a finishing time of 55 minutes and 59 seconds. And that's good, approximately five minutes ahead of second place Quebec. On the men's side, 3x7.5 kilometer relay. It was the opposite. Team Quebec here winning gold, finishing with a time of one hour, four minutes and 44 seconds about a minute ahead of second place, Alberta. Over to hockey we go. Quarterfinals now. Alberta, New Brunswick tied up at two. Matt Savoy cuts in and wires home the wrister. Blocker side handing Alberta the go-ahead goal here. And Savoy not done yet. As he takes a pass from the point. From his demon. And Savoy releases another wrister. Off the point and in his second of the contest. He would also pick up an assist with no scoring in the third period. Alberta defeating New Brunswick by a score of eight to three. Matt Savoy, one of two players who have applied for exceptional status. Here he is with Paul Hollingsworth. Joined by Matt Savoy, young center for Team Alberta, the men's hockey team getting ready to play at these Canada Winter Games in Red Deer. Um, good to see you. Uh, the Canada Games experience for you looking forward, what do you hope to achieve? What, what are your goals around this event? Obviously winning a gold medal would be great, but bigger picture, you look to come away from this doing what? Just taking in the experience. It's a, it's a real big tournament and especially being the home team, playing on home soil, it's a, it's a pretty special moment with a good group, group of guys, so it should be fun. Who do you emulate your playoff after? Is there, a, is there an NHL player or two that we, if we look at, that's someone you strive to be like? Yeah, I'd say mostly uh, Nathan McKinnon. He's a uh, Real explosive skater, good, uh, good in the offensive zone. He has a great playmaking ability. Uh, hockey players are always on the move. When you chase your dream, sometimes you have to chase it away from home. For you to continue in your path going past this year, you most likely will have to leave home. How do you feel about that? Uh, it's not that big of a deal to me. Uh, I knew it would come sometime if you want to go far in hockey, and that's, that's what I want to do. So it's just part of the game. And, you just got to adapt to it. Family is such a big part of anyone's uh, you know, hockey career, just a life in general. Your older brother Carter has committed to the University of Denver. How has he influenced your hockey career? Uh, he's, he's a great guy. Uh, really, uh, really look up to him. He's, uh, we're pretty close, so he's, uh, he's having a great year as well. Uh, he's playing with Sherwood Park Crusaders this year, and he went there as a 16 year old, so he's having a great year. And just, we're super close, so it's just real nice having a brother just go through it. So often we, we run into young athletes who are super achievers in so many different ways. Uh, not only are you playing up a year on the ice, but also in school. How much of a challenge do those two challenges present to you? Uh, just, just like pushing myself, uh, playing at the highest level possible, and academically it's the same thing. So it was, uh, it's pretty important to get the schooling done. So it was, uh, it was nice to go up a year and then be with uh, all the guys on my team this year, so it's pretty, it's pretty cool. And as you push yourself, you push yourself against the older talent. I is that difficult? Is that something you've adapted well to? How is that going for you? Yeah, I've, I've, I'd say I've adapted. I've been doing it for a few years now, so it's, uh, it's, I know all the guys, so it's just it's nice playing against guys at uh, the same skill level and uh, compete level as me. According to the scouting reports, you get compared to people like Sidney Crosby, Nathan McKinnon. Those are pretty big names. When you read that, you hear that, you think what? Uh, it's just, it's just really special and uh, pretty cool to be, to be just compared to such guys, to guys with such that have accomplished so much as in, in the NHL and as in their careers. So it's just pretty special. The Red Deer 2019 Canada Winter Games are presented by Nova Chemicals. Plastic is a valuable resource not to be discarded. Put it to better use. Kindly recycle while enjoying the games. By MNP, proud supporter of the 2019 Canada Winter Games. By Navigator, when you can't afford to lose. By the city of Red Deer, it's in the spirit of sport. It's here. It's Red Deer.
by The Look Company, building sport and event environments that are always engaging. The proud branding partner of the 2019 Canada Games. Welcome back. Women's short track, 500 meter speed skating. Final round here, 31A at the Gary W. Harris Canada Games Center. 18 year old Hewan Sun from Alberta managing a gold medal in this event. The former Alberta Junior Short Track Female Skater of the Year winning in a close race, finishing in 45 3 2 3 seconds. Claudia Heaney of Ontario and Juliet Bryn Amour of Quebec finished second and third and in just a few moments time the 1000 meter quarterfinals on tsn3 to get you all set up let's go to dustin nielsen and susan ong the 500 meter and 1500 meter are already behind us now we turn our focus to the thousand meter where once again susan the province of quebec will be at the forefront absolutely quebec is obviously has historically and Again, at this game's been very strong in all the races. We have uh, Juliet Bridmore, who has won a medal in both races, gold and silver so far, and uh, William D'Angelo, who's won gold in both races so far. So we'll be looking for good things from them. Yeah, D'Angelo looking for a triple gold. Now, if there are one or two provinces and one or two athletes that could spoil the uh, party here for Quebec, who should we be looking for? Well, we've seen uh, Alberta and Ontario come on really strong at this Games. Uh, Mate Peterson, who also competed at the Junior Worlds earlier this year, uh, will be competing for a medal in this 1,000 meter. And Claudia Heaney from Ontario, who actually won a bronze medal at the Junior Worlds in this, in this distance. So we'll, we'll be looking forward to see what they can do. Up next is the 1,000 meters and short track for men and women here from Red Deer. And we're just getting warmed up. Women's quarterfinals action. Come your way next. Welcome back inside the Gary W. Harris Canada Games Center as our TSN coverage moves to the 1,000 meter short track race. I'm very excited about this. We're with Susan Ock. And Susan, you must be very excited about this as well. Yeah, the 1,000 is one of the probably the most fun races. It's not so short that it's by before you get a chance to really know what's going on and it's long enough and it's uh, short enough that it's still super fast and and uh, almost a sprint nowadays. We've seen a lot of uh, athletes here today. We will both the uh, women's quarterfinals. We've got four of those. We'll have the men's quarterfinals later on then semis and finals as well as we work our way through the thousand meters but the 500 meter the 1500 meter already in the book. Uh, athletes have a lot of success. I mean we've got one guy who's won gold in both the 500 the 1500. How much of an adjustment is, is it for these athletes to go from 500 to 1500 to 1000? Well, they skate these races every weekend all winter long, so uh, they're used to the different tactical kind of necessities of every distance. Obviously, 500 is a pure sprint. They just go from the gun. The 1500 has a little more tactics in it, but the 1000 now is skated often with the top skaters right from the front. They go from the gun almost, uh, but there are tactics involved. Our first quarter final, there's a look at Juliette Brindamore who is out of Quebec, bronze in the 500 meter, gold in the 1500 meter as well. And Leia Tessier had a sixth in the 500 meter and a ninth in the 1500 meter. But uh, Julia Brindamore, one of the future stars of short track for Canada. Absolutely, she competed at the Junior Worlds earlier this uh, winter. And um, this, you know, Canada Games is a bit of a launching pad for some of these skaters. They'll go on to do amazing things internationally. Juliette Brindamore in lane one, and she'll start on the inside here. And uh, a launching pad for short track and long track speed skating as well with a few of these athletes. As we get set for the first of four quarter finals, Juliette Brindamore, Leia Tessier, Ren Acorn out of the Northwest Territories, oh, Angela Zhu, and Dana Ballantyne in lane number five. Ready. And our first quarterfinal is underway. And trying to push ahead on the, from the middle lane, Ren Acorn will head to the front here from the Northwest Territories, followed there by Juliet Brindamore, who will slide along in second. Susan, tell me about jumping out to the lead here and leading the pack. What's that mean for Ren Acorn here in the early going? Well, the skaters need to be the top, either the top two skaters or the two fastest 
uh, third place finishers. So for Ren Acorn, she's not the strongest one out here and knows she has, there's a chance of her coming third, so she wants to make, make sure this race is fast. Acorn leading the way, followed there closely by Brindamore and Tessier, the two Quebec skaters, as they slide in behind Acorn here, followed by Valentine and Angela Zhu in fifth as they work here now with four laps to go. And Julia Brindamore making a pass to get into first place, and now Nea Tessier also sitting in second place. Ren Acorn sitting in third, and Angela Zhu sitting currently in fourth. And again, it's two skaters plus the two fastest third place finishers from all four heats. Dana Ballantyne had fallen. Now there are four skaters away, and it is Brindamore and Tessier leading the pack and by a significant margin in the final lap and it'll be Ren Acorn looking for a solid time in third but it will be the two we were speculating to lead the way getting the job done here Juliet Brindamore and Leah Tessier one and two to advance to the semi-final one step closer to a gold medal here at the Canada Games and Ren or Acorn really skating a smart race here, 135.6 unofficial time. So that's the time we will be looking at. One. And Brindamore, a great pass there. You can see the experience coming out in some of these skaters. There's a great uh, age discrepancy here, 14 all the way to 19. And Juliet skating amongst some of the best in the world, obviously has had some great experience this year. Juliet Brindamore with a time of 133.50. So an excellent time for Brindamore here at the Canada Games. And Brindamore and Tessier will move through to the semifinal. And we will keep things moving along here very quickly as we work our way through the quarterfinals as our next group of skaters in the second quarterfinal are already out here getting ready a few quick repairs to the ice as well but an excellent start for Brindamore and Tessier Susan absolutely they'll be competing for that gold medal in uh, in the final once they get there if they get there they have to go through a, a semi-final as well so um, they they're definitely off to a good start you want to they had a pretty easy race there uh, not a lot of stress and not no messiness it just went well there is a look at our start list for our second quarter final it'll be Lea Chamberlain Dosti in the first lane Cesara start. Bear Victoria Goplin Mika Sun and Jane Green and Victoria Goplin Ready. strong family ties and underway quickly from the outside there, Jane Green from the fifth lane getting the lead of the pack here, at least to start in the opening lap. And a slow start here as the athletes try to pace themselves out. And now Goblin moves ahead into the top spot, followed there by Mika Sun. And yeah, as you said, uh, some history in these in this race right now with Victoria Goblin and her family history of Olympic competitors and also Jane Green, her mother, an Olympic medalist, uh, Eden Donatelli Green, from uh, the early days of short track at the Olympics. Victoria Goplin of Alberta in the lead right now. She skates out of Edmonton, 11th and 12th in the 500 and 1500 meters, respectively. Followed there still by Mika Su. Not a lot of movement so far here in this race. No, this race went out a little bit slower than the last race, so the third place time is really something to look at. Now sl uh, sliding around on the outside and taking the lead, Lea Schomberlein Dosti. And that looked like a really easy pass, and uh, now we're looking at a fight for second. Again, top two qualify automatically, and then the next third fastest time of all four heats. Cesara Bear of Alberta as well, currently in second place, just 14 years old here at the Canada Games as we are in the final lap. And Lea Chamberlain Dosti will advance to the semifinals and she will be joined by the 14 year old Cesara Bear out of Edmonton. And at the age of 14, she's got to be very happy with a second place finish, Susan. That was a great race for Cesara. She's been uh, 
She's had a couple of tougher races, fell in an early one, uh, was advanced, and it's a lot of racing for a 14-year-old in a week. <laughs> for a 14-year-old, how long would she have been skating short track already? What's, what, like, what age do a lot of these athletes, both men and women, start the short track game? Well, skaters start at uh, anywhere between 5 and 10. They're, often we get some skaters from hockey or ringette, okay. uh, skating sports, if they come in a little later. But uh, definitely, she's been skating for a long time. I've heard her name for years now, so <laughs> it's amazing to me to think she's just 14 now. Leia Chamberlain, Ghosty, and Cesara Bear advancing to the semifinal, which brings us to quarterfinal oh, to number three here, Claudia Heaney. A name to watch in quarterfinal number three. Had a silver Ready. in the 500 meter. And she will be in lane one. And she does jump right to the front of the pack. And sliding in behind her there, Quavilong. And again, you can see the experience skating in Claudia Heaney. She got out front just to get away from any any kind of uh, chaos that might happen in behind. She's won actually a bronze medal at the World Championships, the World Junior Championships this year in this distance. And she's out in front really comfortably taking the lead. Now she'll remain in the lead, followed there by Kelly and Cavillon out of Quebec. And in fourth there, Sylvia Kolozajcik from Ontario settling into third here, but still leading the way, Claudia Heaney. Heaney now with some pressure on the inside, and Kevion will take over as we head into the final four laps here in our third quarter final of the day. And this race, it will be a very fast race. Claudia Heaney still sitting in second. Uh, Kaylee and Kevion leading out but the race the pace is quite fast you can see the lap times have gone below 10 seconds a lap that's those are fast laps Heaney still in second trying to push ahead it looked like Kolozajcik might try to move up on the outside as we hit the final lap here in a good race at the front of this group Kavion and Claudia Heaney Heaney with a stumble there and falling with Jano Larder, and it'll be a one-two finish for Kaylee and Kevion and Claudia Heaney. They will advance to the semifinal here out of quarterfinal number three, and a good back and forth there between Heaney and Kaylee and Kevion. Really uh, smart racing for Ontario there with Claudia Heaney taking out the race at a really fast pace, and her teammate, um, Sylvia Kolodzidzic, um, you know, really benefited from that with a 135.594 uh, unofficial time. So we're looking at those third place times to see who will qualify of the two people that get to qualify from third place. And that 135.594 is going to be in the mix probably for one of the ninth or tenth spots in our semifinals. And this will bring us to our fourth and final quarterfinal. Four skaters in the fourth quarterfinal, so a little bit more room out there. This will be highlighted by He Won Sun, who skates out of Calgary, 500 in the, or gold rather, in the 500 meter, finished 20th in the 1500 meter. And uh, Roxanne Beaudry was bronze in the 1500 meter, so couple of contestants here who already have medals here at the Canada Games, which should lead to a pretty nice race. Absolutely. Two different kinds of skaters, too. Um, to he won. Sun is, a, is quite a sprinter, so this race will be hard if it goes out from the Ready. Gun. He won. Sun with the number one on her helmet on the inside, and now jumping out there, Roxanne Beaudry. Actually, Beaudry sitting back in fourth right now. As it is Sherilyn Chung and Caitlin Pelkey in the front of the pack from Alberta and British Columbia. And the places at the line at the start line are actually significant. They are their rankings currently in that heat. So uh, He Wan Son is ranked the highest of these girls that are in this heat. And so she's just looking to sit here and relax and try to pass somewhere. Here she goes on the outside. And 
a burst there from Sun, and now she'll slide up to the top spot. She did it rather easily, it looked like. She's got a lot of speed. She's a sprinter, and she skates technically very, very well. Oh, no, and a fall. A stumble there for Sherilyn Chung. And that will take her out of contention and leaves three in this lead pack. And he won Sung leading the way. Roxanne Baudry will take an inside lane and now take over the lead with three laps to go. And this is not as fast a race as the other ones that we've seen. I don't I don't know if third place will be one of the top two fastest times. So Caitlin Pickley, Pelkey really needs to push through right to the finish if she wants to see one of the fastest third places. Baudry and Sun, the top two seeds coming into this final quarter final, have skated away with the one and two finish. As they come home, it'll be Roxanne Baudry in first, and he won Sun of Alberta in second place. And third place there, 138.678. Caitlin Pelkey, that will not be enough, I don't believe, to push her through to the top 10 in the semifinals. But I love the pace, four quarter finals, just like that. Very fast skating. Like I said, these races are going out faster and faster from the gun. Um, and it depends on what kind of skater you are, whether you sit at the back or sit at the front. And he wants on at the beginning of that race for a couple of laps kind of just hung around at the back i think knowing that when she wanted to go it was her race to take over great skating for these girls he wants on with a lot of speed coming comfortably in second quarterfinals women's 1000 meters in the books up next four quarterfinals for the men Welcome back to Red Deer, everyone, and thank you for joining us. Red. Men's 1,000 meter quarterfinal number one. And on the inside lane there, William Dagenau, who has gold already twice in these games, 500 and 1,500, and he'll slide to the back of the pack here in the 1,000, and now he's going to make a move on the outside. A leading here right now, though, Marshall Schub out of British Columbia. And William D'Angelo now having to do a little bit of work. It's, uh, you know, he's pretty comfortable. He's a strong skater, but starting from the very back of the pack will make it. So he has to work his way back up to the front. Again, two plus two qualify for the final. So it's the two first place, first and second place skaters from each heat and the fastest third place finisher. Nathan Thomas in first, and there comes D'Angelo right up the middle, a double gold medalist already with a nice burst. Looks a lot taller than a lot of the other kids out there on the ice right now. Yeah, sure track comes in all shapes and sizes, <laughs> but typically they're a little bit smaller. William D'Angelo taking a peek behind him. He's very strong, has a lot of speed, and really just wants to get through this race comfortably. That's exactly what he's doing right now. He's got a pretty wide margin sliding in there. Nathan Thomas, number two out of Alberta, as D'Angelo in the final lap here, an opportunity to really pull away as he's flying around the track. And a real race for second place between Nathan Thomas and Connor Rogerson. Connor Rogerson looking like he just snuck in there. So Rogerson, who kind of hung around the back end of the pack for the entire race, slides in with a 128-93, but a very impressive race from William D'Angelo, who, as we mentioned, gold already 500 and 1500. And when he wanted to take that race over, he burst right up through the middle and didn't look back. And a surprise finish for Tyler McGee, who snuck his feet forward. So it's the blade as soon as it hits the ground, photo finish and a really close finish between him and Nathan Thomas right at the end of the race. 129.058 to 129.064. None of them within striking distance though of Quebec's William Dagenau. And he will advance in another semifinal for him coming up. Something that we'll be very excited to see as he has been one of the stars of short track here so far at the Canada Games. As the Second crew for our second quarter final comes on out here. One of the guys we'll be focused on is Nicola Perot, who has silver in the 500 and silver in the 1500. Also from Quebec, skating out of Sherbrooke, he will be on the inside lane in the blue with the yellow helmet. On the right side of your screen, on the inside lane, 
go to the spot. Felix Roussel also skating out of Sherbrooke, Quebec, fifth in the 500 and sixth in the 1500. He's right. in lane number two. So the two Quebec teammates, the two guys to watch in this race. And it'll be a quick push from the four spot there for Keenan St. Rose of British Columbia. But Nicolas Perot able to maintain top spot here. And Nicolas Perot taking out the lead pretty comfortably. Two Quebec skaters in this race, and if they get together, they will control the race. So there is team skating allowed in speed skating now, and uh, and these skaters could hypothetically, if both Quebec skaters are at the front, um, block if they if they race this race sort of together with each other. You mentioned team skating allowed now. How recently ago when you say now? Yeah, it was illegal before. Okay. Um, this is a relatively recent, okay. uh, you know, I'm not sure what year it changed in the last several years, though, and skaters are learning how to basically help each other a little more. Oh, no, and a crash there. Wow, what a good save. Nicolas Perot in the top spot. Felix Roussel, number two. He's back and forth trying to catch up. Anthony Cormier, Lucier in the second spot right now, but Nicolas Perot really starting to open things up here from Quebec for the final lap. He'll have the lead. Anthony Cormier, Lucier, now being passed on the inside here by Kitts Richards of Ontario. And Richards will get that leg down and a fist pump for the second place finish for Richards out of Ontario, whose best so far was a 15th place in the 1500 meters. So he's guaranteed to have better than that here in the 1000 meter. But once again, I mean, we talked about the Quebec skater in the first quarter final, William Dangeneau, and now Nic Nicolas Perot, another Quebec skater under control here in quarterfinal number two. Yes, Quebec definitely has some great young skaters coming up, as usual at the Canada Games. And uh, they, you know, incidentally in Canada have probably half of the membership of all skaters in Canada. So um, really a great base. They have a great racing circuit, and you can see the results. The Canada Games, Quebec is very strong. Of the six medals dished out so far, in short track, 500 and 1500, it's all been Quebec, BC, and Ontario. Uh, here's an opportunity for Alberta to get in the mix. Number one in the inside lane there, Brendan Yamada, out of on Alberta. Felix Pejon, number two, out of Quebec here for quarterfinal number three. Yamada, bronze in the 500 meter and a fifth in the 1500 meter skates out of Calgary. So close to home here for Brendan Yamada. Brendan Yamada will definitely have some fans in this arena. A really great facility in Red Deer with really fast ice. We're a little bit higher altitude here, but the ice, uh, Jillian Campbell, the ice meister here, has really <laughs> done a lot of research and has made very fast ice for this competition. Pretty good crowd here in attendance for your 1,000 meter short track finals. We're in the quarterfinal stage, quarterfinal right. number three for the men. <laughs> top two from each quarterfinal advance, plus the top two third place finishes. Yamada out to the lead, and now Pigeon will slide in underneath, and two and one are in one and two spots right now. And this really is a perfect position for Brendan Yamada. He's more of a sprinter. Felix Pigeon has a lot of experience and is easily, comfortably out in the lead. Sebastian Champagne settling in there in the third place right now, and it's a one, two, three here with six laps to go in quarterfinal number three. You can see it's really quite a fast race, but there is time to do some jostling around and figuring yourself out. To, you can see uh, Brendan Yamada looking back to see how far away third place is. Coming in first or second, obviously, is a lot more comfortable than having to be the fastest third. So uh, they're vying for first and second in this race, but they want the race to be fast enough to have a potential third place fastest time. Now Yamada slides on the inside, takes over top spot with two laps to go. And Pigeon will take over in second and still hanging around there in third, Sebastian Champagne. 
And Brendan Yamada really having a great race here in his last lap. When the bell rings, that's one lap to go. And Brendan Yamada coming around to the finish. Yamada took over there over the final couple of laps, cruising to a second place finish. Felix Pigeon and Sebastian Champagne as well. 126.8. A new Canadian record for Brendan Yamada announced here in house to a round of applause as those last couple of laps really pushed him to the new Canadian record. And Susan, we're just in the quarterfinals. A couple yes. more races for these kids. Yeah, these races though, because it's a fastest uh, two, yep. like a fastest third place, they will be fast because skaters have to take them out fast. So someone in the race is usually motivated to take this race out fast. And that was definitely a fast one with Sebastian Champagne setting a, a bit of a, a good third place finish with 127.58. Our fourth and final quarterfinal for the men. Six skaters in this one. Matej Pedersen out of Alberta. A name to watch in this one. Eighth in the 500 meter, had bronze in the 1500 meter. And you mentioned he's one of Alberta's hopefuls for a medal here today in the men's 1000 short track. Matej Peterson also competed at the Junior Worlds earlier this year, so has some experience and, and made, I believe, a final um, at those Junior Worlds or at least a semi final. And so has some experience skating with the fastest in the world. Definitely could help him with his confidence here in this quarterfinal, trying to work towards a semifinal. Two spots still Red. available, maybe one more depending on the time of third place. And a quick jump there from Manuel Pilardo. And he'll take over top spot. Matthias Bath in second right now. And there in third, Matej Peterson. And three Alberta skaters in this race, so, you know, they can really try to work together. There are six skaters in this race, which is unusual for a thousand meters. Someone would have been advanced early in the heats. How much, how much more difficult could that make it here with six skaters in a heat like this? In a sprint, it's very difficult. In uh, World Championships, it's often just four skaters. Now they are uh, increasing that amount of skaters to five, but six is a lot on the line. Pilardo still leading the way here out of Quebec. And now Peterson falling all the way to the back of the pack. Going to have to push it here as we work our way through with three laps to go. Peterson stumbles and he is down. Oh, and a disappointing fall for Mate Peterson for sure. That will be uh, hard to take. A bronze medalist in the 1500 meter has fallen here in the 1,000 meter quarterfinal, and that's gonna open things up as we head to the final lap for Manuel Falardo and Matthias Baith, and they're well ahead of the pack, and they will be your one and two in quarterfinal number four. But you're right, the story there, a tough fall for Matej Peterson, who came into this as a possible medal hopeful in the 1,000 meter. Absolutely, and I don't see that anything happened there that would uh, cause him to be advanced in this race. He was passing, and here we, uh, we see he just caught his blade on someone else and, and tripped. Six bodies out there that you have to work with, right? I mean, that was the stumble that we saw. And it was weird because he seemed like he was comfortable in third, then all of a sudden he was back in sixth. And then I think he realized, okay, I've got to somehow work my way back up here and was not able to get through some of the traffic at the back of the pack. Really unfortunate finish for him. He would be very disappointed to not move on to the semifinals. Filardo and Baith out of Quebec and Alberta respectively will be your two semifinalists moving out of quarter final number four. Semifinal action still to come here on TSN as we work our way through the thousand meter short track men's and women's at the Canada Games.
The Red Deer 2019 Canada Winter Games are presented by Nova Chemicals. Nova invests heavily in communities where we live and work. Sustainability is a team effort. Thank you for letting us be a part of the team. By Shaw, the official telecommunications provider of the Canada Games. By Winmar Restoration, offering complete residential and commercial property restoration services with 24-hour emergency service and a response time that can't be beat. By NOSAC Food Group, serving Central Alberta for over 36 years. And by ATB. ATB is proud of you, Alberta, and proud to support the 2019 Canada Winter Games. Well, the table set for the semifinals in the 1,000 meter speed skating. And we'll get back to that in just a few moments. But first, ringette. For Elizabeth Welsh, the sport has given her so much, including an eight year relationship. Paul Hollingsworth has more. The story behind this friendship goes back eight years. Elizabeth Welsh can remember it like it was yesterday watching Canada Games 2011 that were hosted in Halifax. At the time, Welsh from Bedford, Nova Scotia, was a 12-year-old ringette player watching Team Alberta play. Brianna Beck was the starting goalie, one of the best in the country at her position. I was sitting in the stands uh, watching an Alberta game near Bree's mom, and she invited me to sit on the blanket that she had because apparently I looked cold. A connection was made and the two sat together for the rest of the Canada Games. Welsh followed every play, and within days, she had discovered her idol. She wanted to be just like Brianna Beck when she grew up. She's definitely one of my inspirations. Just watching someone play that level and that speed and hoping that I could do that one day was phenomenal. When the 2011 Games ended and Beck returned to Alberta, she wanted to try and stay in touch. She was flattered by the support. To have someone look up to you when you're new to the elite level was extra special. Her mother called the Ringette Association back in Nova Scotia, looking to track Welsh down. And said, hey, I sat next to uh, this little girl named Lizzie. Her brother goes to the University of New Brunswick. Her mom is helping her coach. Uh, she plays on one of your U12 uh, teams. Do you think you can help me out? I know that there's probably some privacy issues, but we're trying to track this down. My daughter played on Team Alberta and would like to send her a note. They connected and through Facebook, a long distance relationship was formed. I sent her a card thanking you for yeah. uh, coming out and supporting us. Fast forward eight years. Welsh made the Nova Scotia Canada Games ringette team as a goalie. And she was traveling to, of all places, Alberta. <laughs> When Beck found out, she knew it was her turn to sit in the cold stands and cheer on her friend. I was coming to this game for sure. Beck says she'll cheer for Alberta and Nova Scotia and for Welsh. I can cheer for an individual, for sure. <laughs> but coming from someone who's already reached this level, Beck also has a message. The Canada Games is a life-defining experience. It's not just about wins and losses. Enjoy every moment of it. It goes by incredibly fast. Uh, but just take a moment and realize how much work went into your preparation to get here and enjoy every moment you're on the ice. It all goes by so fast, and so does eight years. But friendships last forever. Paul Haldingsworth, TSN. Coming up after the break, we check back in with Paul Hollingsworth, who has quite the tough assignment. What does it take to make it to the Canada Winter Games? It takes dedication. It takes drinking gross health shakes. It takes exercise. It takes facing the cold no matter what. It takes Pushing yourself to the limit without stopping. But above all, it takes knowing how to play sports.
troubled monk. Terrible at sports. Great at beer. Well, of the 20,000 visitors expected to reach inside of Red Deer, Alberta, besides the events that they can check out, they can also try the Canada Games' own specialty beer. Here is Paul Hollingsworth. All right, so we're inside the Troubled Monk, joined by Charlie, who is the man behind the bar of the Troubled Monk. Uh, a great success story, a local Red Deer success story, smack dab in the middle of this beautiful town that's hosting the Canada Games. And when it comes to your beer, you have a great tie-in to the Canada Winter Games. Tell us about it. Yeah, so we're the official craft beer, or the official beer of the Canada Winter Games this year. Um, we worked with them to create the, the, the craft beer for the Games. So. They, they came to us with the idea and we went we worked together to uh, come up with uh, a Kolsch. Um, the festive ale Kolsch. It's a German style ale. It's fermented at lager temperatures. So it's nice, clean, crisp, easy drinking and uh, really refreshing. Charlie, if you're going to examine how beer is made, this is the room to visit. So explain the process to us as best you can. Explain the equipment to us. Yeah, so this is where the magic happens. Uh, it starts with the hoppa. We put uh, grain up there, we that's mix Arnold, it down. That's Arnold Schwarzenegger's <laughs> that's, pop that's a little Arnie humor for you, yeah. Uh, we mix, we, we put grain in there, malted barley, uh, drop it down into the mash tun, mix it with water, create a sweet tea called wort, and then we transfer that wort from this vessel over into the brew kettle, where we mix it with some hops and boil it for about an hour or so. After the beer is brewed, we transfer it into the fermenters uh, where it ferments. So we mix it with the yeast, um, the, 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 the yeast eats the sugar, gives off CO2 and alcohol. That process takes about two weeks. And then you're ready to bottle after this? After this, it gets transferred into bright tanks where it carbonates and clarifies, and then we'll either can it or keg it. How is your beer being received? People love it. It's fantastic beer. Canada Games, better with a festival beer. So should a Canada Games beer be, be branded with beer from here? Is that a perfect fit? Absolutely. I mean, maybe several brands at the same time. You know, two or three different beers. We could have the, the uh, hockey beer. We could have the curling beer. I hear curlers like to drink. I'm not sure about that. Um, I personally, you know, think this Kolsch is fantastic. Get down here, get some in you. You get 12 cans there, right? I do have 12 cans. How long do 12 cans last you? Well, personally, well, uh, <laughs> I shouldn't answer this because the wife might see this broadcast, but uh, probably one night. This is a great place. If anyone's visiting, you guys should come down. Like, honestly, it, it's small, but it's uh, it's just got a great, great humor, great, great atmosphere down here. Are you old enough to be in here? Uh, <laughs> but you don't drink the beer? No. No. We only drink the pop. Charlie, you were telling us that by trade, you're an accountant, a, a chartered accountant. So how does a chartered accountant from Red Deer get into the business side of producing beer. It's, it's an interesting story. Yeah, you know, I've always been an entrepreneur at heart and coming out of university, I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do next, but I knew if I had a CA as a background, that would give me a tremendous insight and a foundation to build off of. Um, so I've just did a couple different business ventures and then the opportunity came up to open up a brewery with my family in uh, Red Deer and we took it. And I know you're, you're proud of the success, but you're also proud of the partnership that your brewery, the Troubled Monk, has had with the Canada Games Committee. Absolutely. So the local Canada Games Committee deserves tremendous credit for this because they had the leadership to work with a local brewery as opposed to going with some of the bigger national breweries out there and support local community, support craft, and uh, to me that's just tremendous. Congratulations on any success. Congratulations to your town, Red Deer, on the Winter Games. Cheers. Cheers. Speed skating when we return the 1,000 meter semifinals. Welcome back to Red Deer, everyone. We are at the Canada Games Center, and we are down to the semifinals here for the 1,000-meter short track. The women's to come first, followed by the men's, and we've already had a few Canadian records fall here today at the Canada Games Center as Juliette Brindamore in her quarterfinal heat 
set a new Canadian record at 133.55, and we're going to get another look at that. She'll be up here in quarterfinal number one. It was an excellent skate, wasn't it, Susan? It was a nice, calm skate. It was a nice, smooth, calm skate. Really easy for her. One lap to go here, two arms on her back, and really not pushing that much. You can see the experience in her from racing with the best in the world earlier this year. We talked about how significant it is to see that Canadian record fall considering uh, it was set in 2007, so 12 years now until that's set. So what does that say about the future of Canadian skating when you've got, it took 12 years to have an excellent record fall? Well, to break a record of Valerie Maltese from 2007, <laughs> who went on to do a lot at Olympic Games and is now one of our up and coming long track skaters, that's, uh, that's a really good, um, those are great shoes to follow for Julia Brindamore. We need to mention that Lea Tessier, who will be in the second lane here, tied the old Canadian record in that same skate. So uh, two girls in the quarterfinals with some of the best that we've seen here for Canadian skating, and that'll bring us to semifinal number one. Go to the start. Ready. Juliette Brindamore in number one, and she will slide to the front of the pack, followed there by fellow Quebec teammate Lea Tessier. And you have to think that those two Quebec teammates can dictate the pace of this skate, Susan. They can, and uh, in this race, it's two plus one. So the top two skaters and the next fastest third place time from both heats. Uh, qualify for the finals. So five people only, not all three will make it in both finals in the top three. So this is, uh, they are setting this race up to have a reasonably fast race. And you can see the skaters at the back really wanting to pick it up now. Ren Acorn trying to make a move on the outside. It's three Quebec skaters in the one, two, three spots right now. Julia Brindamore still with the lead. Lea Chamberlain Dosti sliding in there now. Lea Tessier as well as the three Quebec skaters continue to go back and forth with four laps to go. And a pretty smooth skate here for Brindamore right now. Julia Brindamore really controlling this race. It looks so easy for her from the front. Sometimes when skaters are skating their fastest, it looks really calm and easy. And now, uh, Mia chamberlain Dosti really trying to make a move and is out in the lead ahead of Julia Brindamore. All three of these Quebec skaters moving very quickly, maybe thinking getting the two plus the one more for that third Quebec skater, possibly all three of them to advance. If they can finish one, two, three here with a solid time, and it will be Lea chamberlain Dosti followed there in second by Juliette Brindamore and Lea Tessier in third with a 134.722. So some pretty good times there for the three Quebec skaters. Very good times. It's hard when there are three Quebec skaters in one heat, but you're bound to have that with five skaters here at the Canada Games from each province. Frustrating for the athletes from Alberta and the Northwest Territories. You, you mentioned it a couple of times. Looked like they wanted to kind of push the pace a little bit and get moving, but the three very strong Quebec skaters led by Juliette Brindamore and Lea chamberlain Dosti, who ended up winning that semifinal, obviously controlling that race. Well, Acorn and, uh, and uh, Bear, obviously the youngsters in that crowd. So uh, really great experience for them to get to skate on the line with some of the top skaters in the world. Yeah, Cesara Bear out of Edmonton, just 14 years old and being here in a semifinal at the Canada Games, obviously a nice step for her moving forward as we get set for quarterfinal number two, Roxanne Beaudry in the four lane, a name to watch, Kaylee and KB Own the in the number one lane on the inside. Ready. Claudia Heaney, number two, a name to watch, and now she will jump to the front of the pack, and she's got the ability to lead this race, doesn't she? Claudia Heaney's very strong. She won a medal at the Junior Worlds in this race, a bronze medal, and this is a really tough heat for these girls. Any one of them uh, could be in the top two and have the fastest third time, so um, they are taking it out very fast. The lap times are really good right now. Not quite as fast as the last heat, but uh, a little bit more tactic 
tactical for the top two skaters. Haley and Kavion of Quebec now in the top spot, and that is Heaney just on the inside hip of her, now sliding in there. Roxanne Beaudry out of Quebec as well. So two Quebec skaters here in one and three. And a push from Ontario's Claudia Heaney sitting there in number two right now with three and a half laps to go. Yeah, you can see Claudia Heaney really not comfortable with sitting in second. She just wants to be out there in the front of this race. Roxanne, Roxanne Beaudry sitting in the lead very comfortably, but Ca Claudia Heaney trying to pass almost on every corner. And Kaylin Camion really wants to keep this race moving, moving fast in case she is the third place finisher. Beaudry, as we enter the final lap, was a bronze medalist in the 1500. She leads here, followed there by Heaney. Maybe a push on the outside now from Kavion. Heaney holding on to the number two spot, now pushing for the top spot. And that's gonna be a very close finish for Heaney and Kavion. And I think Heaney may have ended up edging her out at the last moment. Yeah, I believe that Claudia Heaney actually came out in front and that's the unofficial finish. Claudia Heaney in first, Roxanne Beaudry in second, and uh, Kaylee and Kavion in third. And that looks like the fastest third place. So these three will unofficially go on to the final. And we'll get your official results here, but an excellent skate there from Ontario's Claudia Heaney, who was in second, and as Susan had mentioned, tried to pass on a number of turns. Finally got it done right at the finish line. Still to come here from Red Deer, your men's semi-final action in the 1,000 meter short track race. Canadian short track records continue to fall here at the Canada Games in Red Deer. We mentioned it earlier, Juliette Brindamore is setting a record. That record has since been broken by Claudia Heaney on the women's side of things as she went 133.481 in her semifinal. And in the men's quarterfinal, it was Brendan Yamada. And this is a look at his Canadian record of 126.700. And he really took over the final couple of laps of that quarterfinal pulling away from the competition and he was really chasing that Canada Games record he was trying pretty hard and he was sitting out in front so uh, it's fun to see these records go down a very strong semi-final here led by Yamada who is skating out of Alberta he'll be on the inside lanes to start Felix Pigeon from Quebec Sebastian Champagne out of Ontario Nicola Perot out of Quebec as well and Kitz Richards from Ontario who snuck in here to the semifinal. And he will be in the outside lane to start this for our first semifinal for the men. Yamada on the inside from Alberta. One to watch here, but a couple of these Quebec skaters really impressed in their quarterfinal action as well, didn't they, Susan? Absolutely. Nicholas Perrault will be really looking for uh, an early time. lead, I think, and to control this race. Red. Nicola Perot, silver in the 500, silver in the 1500. And it is Yamada who jumps out to a lead here, and he is followed by Perot, as we expected there in the one and two spot through the first lap, followed there by Felix Pigeon. Once again, it's two plus the fastest third place that qualify through to the final in this group. So they want to have a pretty good pace going out at the start. Brendan Yamada is controlling this race right now. He's taking it out pretty easy, and yeah. I'm surprised the skaters at the back, you can see them trying to jostle their way up, but it's, uh, it's tough when you have really experienced skaters at the front. Now Perot will slide into the front, followed by Yamada. Pigeon in the number three hole as they come around with four laps to go. Yamada slides back into third as the two Quebec skaters will now take over. Yamada still sitting there in third, just set a Canadian record. Now he sits in third as they'll open things up a little bit. And this is not a great position for Brandon Yamada to be in. He needs to break through uh, those two Quebec skaters and there he goes really close past there. Slides on the inside as we head to the final lap leading the way. Nicolas Perot followed there by Brendan Yamada and it will be Perot number one. Yamada crosses the line in second, followed by Felix Pigeon. 
and number three, 127, 505 Perot. Not enough to set another new Canadian record, but still a pretty quick pace there, especially over the last four or five laps, Susan, when they really opened it up. Absolutely, and Nicola Perot really passed with ease. He uh, skated that race smart. He stayed behind for the beginning of it and then made some moves at the end. And here you see this close pass by Brendan Yamada. Great skating by all skaters there. So Yamada and Perot, the two names that we expected. And it looks as though on video they're going to take another look at the pass. You noticed it right away. It was a very close pass. What would they be looking for on that video? What are they trying to break down? Oh, the results are official, but what would they have been looking well, at? Well, if it football? had impeded, if Yamada had impeded on the skater he was okay. passing, if they didn't, they, they need to be going into the corner. He needs to be ahead of the skater he was trying to pass. All right, here's a look at semifinal number two, and this will be headlined by double gold medalist already at these games out of Quebec, William Dangeno. He will be number one on the inside lane. Next to him, fellow Quebecer Manuel Falardo, who had an excellent quarterfinal run as well. Skaters from Alberta, Ontario, and New Brunswick also in the mix. But William Dangeno is the name that we're going to be watching throughout this one. He's got the length on the inside here. And as I mentioned, already golden twice in these games. As they will the step start. to the line in the semifinal. Red. And off the start, Filardo, number two skater to the lead, followed there by Rogerson out of Ontario. And the skaters other than the two Quebec skaters, will really want this race to get out fast so they can try to buy for one of the one of the top, well, the top third place finish. D'Angelo sitting there in third place right now. Taking his time and watching on here. We saw him make a move in his quarterfinal heat. Let's see if he does it again here. And William D'Angelo really not the fastest starter, but Roger, uh, Connor Rogerson wanting to take this race out fast, and he's sitting now in a really great position in third place if he can hold it, and he doesn't. D'Angelo did take over as they moved into the fourth lap. Now he sits in number one, followed by his Quebec teammate, Pilato, in number two. D'Angelo carrying the pace right now. And Matthias Bay from uh, Alberta is sitting in third place. Almost uh, almost managed to get a pass there, but this is a very fast heat. And he will try to get one of the fastest third times now. Final lap to go, and the two Quebec skaters have taken away a lead from the rest of the pack. And it'll be a 1-2 finish for Quebec in this semifinal. Pilardo and Danzano crossing the line. 126.477 unofficially I believe that's another Canadian record passing the 126.70 earlier today from Brendan Yamada so both Quebec skaters there actually would have had enough for the Canadian record and we're seeing some really fast times right from the beginning that semifinal was quicker than the first one wasn't it that semifinal was great we'll have to wait to see the final times but i believe that matthias baith will be the the third place finisher that will be in the final so baith with a good job there as well at 128 134 but manuel falardo and william dangeno your top two moving through to the men's final, and that's what we have left here in Red Deer. Medals still to be handed out for short track 1,000 meters. The Red Deer 2019 Canada Winter Games are presented by Melcor, building the communities where people live, work, shop, and play since 1923. By Columbia, we love keeping you warm. By Santec, architects, engineers, scientists, and project managers who design with community in mind. By the Canadian Olympic Foundation, a proud national partner of the Canada Games, supporting our athletes today builds the champions of tomorrow. And by Tech, Canada's largest diversified resource company and the exclusive metal supplier for the Canada Games.
Welcome back inside the TSN studios. Kayla Gray here with you as we get set for the finals in the 1,000 meter. But over to gymnastics now. For Maggie Carson, she's been through it all. Over the last two years, she had two brain surgeries as well as dealing with chemotherapy. And now she is here at the Canada Games in Red Deer, Alberta. With more on her inspiring journey, let's go to Paul Hollingsworth. Maggie Carson has come to Red Deer to compete in the sport she loves. I feel exhilarated. I feel like that's what I'm supposed to be doing. But not that long ago, three years to be exact, when she was 11, Carson was facing a much bigger challenge than anything she'll ever experience in the gym. I had headaches for about a year and a half prior to December 2016. She knew something was wrong. When she was examined by a doctor, the news was devastating. And then we found the tumor in 2016. Carson was diagnosed with a brain tumor. Her life had changed direction. Her family was devastated. I think they tried their best to keep their composure and uh, keep themselves from getting too emotional in front of me. Initially, a decision was made to push the surgery back to May of 2017, allowing her to compete in the Western Canadian Championship. But then her health began to decline. We had to move it up because I had a seizure and I started having symptoms again. Now, two surgeries and three years later, she's symptom free, full of energy and competing on the highest stage. Through it all, Carson never stayed away from the gym. She was always training. It was hard to keep my physical abilities up, um, but it was it was really easy to just get back to my normal environment, and it felt really good to get back to gym. Carson actually improved during the time she was recuperating from two brain surgeries. I jumped from level eight to level ten. Training for the Canada Games is a tough assignment for any young athlete. Factor in a brain tumor and it proved to Maggie Carson that she is strong. She has a toughness to her that she brings to her sport and to her life every day. Courage wise and mentally and physically she's able to handle a lot. She hardly ever tells me like she's hurting or this and that like I'll have to ask her and really probe on her. She's just someone who shows a lot of strength and bravery. Gymnastics remains Carson's primary focus, but her health concerns are a constant issue that won't go away. Right now, as of my last MRI, I'm stable. Everything's fine. I, the tumor's not completely gone, but it's, it's stable. No, no growth, no shrinkage. In Red Deer, she's competing for the Northwest Territories, for her parents and the doctors who provided care during her darkest moments. I would not be here without them. But Carson is also competing for herself. Who could blame her? Grabbing a medal at the Canada Games would be a crowning achievement for this brave 14-year-old who has overcome so much. Paul Hollingsworth, TSN. Let's check in with some highlights now. All around a female final from Tuesday. Quebec who won gold in the team competition on Sunday ended up with four athletes in the top six. Chloe Lorange took home the gold with top scores on the even, uneven bars, beam, and floor with a total score of 37.787. She narrowly beat her fellow Quebec athlete, Marielle Maureen, who was the top qualifier heading in. It's Quebec's fourth and fifth medals in the event over the last six Canada Games. When we return, hoping to make a name for himself at the Canada Games, we learn more about Woody Belfort. Hi, my name is Woody Belfort. I'm a wheelchair basketball player for Team Quebec, and I'm at the 20, uh, 20, 2019 Canada Games. Ladies, I'm single, so if ever you want to come see me, come to Red Deer, or you can call me at 174. Don't laugh, I'm proud. <laughs> and come, come, or if you can't, watch it on TSN. <laughs> Well, you heard the man. I mean, Woody clearly likes comedy, but there's nothing more that he loves than basketball. With more, let's go to Paul Hollingsworth. Meet Woody Belfort. Woody is his nickname. My real name is like unpronounceable in the human language. 
Like, it's, it's super hard. I even have problems pronouncing so it. So we're sticking with Woody? Yeah, we're sticking with Woody. Belfour is a wheelchair basketball player for Quebec. It's a sport he loves more than anything else. If basketball was a person, I would have married it since I was 12. I love the sport with every fiber of my body. Belfour is a classic example of a young man taking the biggest bite he can out of life every single day. I attract, pe I attract people with my energy. He likes to talk. It's all natural. My mom, she's worse than me. And laugh. <laughs> Ask him anything and you'll get a full energy response. For example, why the flat top? Thank you, thank you. Bring back the 70s. <laughs> How about future ambitions, life after basketball? I'm going to be a professional bodybuilder. Really? His favorite food is everything. I want a seafood diet. I see food, I eat it. <laughs> and his best live concert experience is one heck of a story. We were at this concert, me and my friends, we were having fun. And my song come up, my, came up and they were like, we should lift you up. I'm like, yeah, let's go. They started lifting me up. I started dancing. Then. I decided to show off a little. I went out of my chair while I'm in the air. I pull, I, I, I went to a handstand, which is basically me holding my chair and my legs are in the air. Beyond the laughter and the constant good mood, there lies a serious side to Woody Belfour. He was born with a disability. It's basically a, a cerebral palsy and it, it affected my lower body mostly. Not surprisingly, he's never let it get him down. I adapt to my surroundings because I know what I have and I sort of adapt to what happens to me. So I don't overcome it, I adapt and use it. We all have our setbacks, we all have our problems, but once you get on the court and you know you're good at what you do, it, it just, it's just breath of fresh air. Belfour is easy to cheer for and he has no shortage of supporters. He recently opened up a GoFundMe page to raise money to buy a new wheelchair. The response was overwhelming. I got the five, 5K in 48 days. Now he wants to repay those who have helped him the only way he knows how, to try his hardest on the court and help bring home a gold medal. If you're good to the sport, the sport will be good to you. And once you've met Woody Belfour, he'll not only be good to you, he'll be your friend for life. Day seven at the Canada Winter Games. We've got your hockey highlights coming up for you next. Community. Um, and that's because it was the first time that I really felt connected um, to my fellow athletes and to Canadians when I competed at the 1999 Canada Games in Cornerbury. One word that is probably best in the Canada Games for me is teamwork, number one. Because I remember uh, I had uh, my coach uh, there, we had the team leader and everything, and I had the great game. So teamwork, number one. When I think of the Canada Games, I think of the athletes coming together and competing with all of their heart. But not only the athletes, but also the volunteers, the community, and all the coaches coming together with such passion for the Canada Games. Artistic swimming from Wednesday duet free routine finals. Team Alberta's Jamie Zarkowski and Taya Hoffman finishing with a total score of 157, including their technical routine. That good to capture gold, two points ahead of second place Quebec. And over to Thursday's artistic swimming solo free routine, it was Calgary's Zarkowski continuing to shine here. Claiming her second gold of the games, collecting a final score of 158 points, including her technical routine. On to some men's ice hockey quarterfinals action from Wednesday. Team Ontario taking on Manitoba. Ontario's captain Shane Wright gets around the defender here. Buries a backhander by the netminder. Then also adding a helper in this one, Wright, a member of the Don Mills Flyers. And then it's Pickering, Ontario native Brennan Offman. Also a member of the Flyers, also scores. Ontario would win this thing 6-3 the final. Well, Shane Wright, a player that many said you need to keep an eye on during the Canada Games. With more on the athlete compared to Sidney Crosby, let's go to Paul Hollingsworth. 
Just 15 years old, Ontario captain Shane Wright is a player already considered to be a future star. Everything about him is elite world-class level. Just like Sidney Crosby, Nathan McKinnon and Jonathan Drouin, previous teenage stars at the Canada Games, Wright has been the main hockey attraction in Red Deer. must-see viewing for fans and scouts, and he's taking it all in stride. I just don't focus on it. I just totally ignore it. I just go play hockey, do my job. I don't think the pressure uh, affects him in a negative light. I think he rises to the occasion. When the Canada Games end, Wright will return to his midget team, the Don Mills Flyers. After that, he'll await word on if he'll receive exceptional status recognition and enter the OHL draft as an underage player. But in Red Deer, he's not focused on the OHL. He's here to lead Ontario to a gold medal. It's quite a competition. It's quite an honor to be here. I mean, it's against the best competitions. He's adapting to a level of hockey that's higher than any he's previously played. I think it's kind of just changing the way I live in. I mean, like, I'm not with my parents as much. Um, I mean, different foods. I think uh, just adjusting to that, you know, my sleep habits are changing as well. He's a special player, and that term is used too often these days. But in my coaching experience, he's the most special player I may have ever been around. Ontario head coach Jeff Jordan says when it comes to defining Shane Wright's key attributes, it's really a two-part answer. Obviously, he's one of the best 15-year-old hockey players in the world. But Jordan says Wright's behavior off the ice, on the bench, and in the room, nothing rattles him. He's mature beyond his years, and that is something that also sets him apart from his peers. Paul Hollingsworth, TSN. And the Canada Winter Games continues tomorrow with gold up for grabs in the men's hockey final. Coverage begins at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, 6.30 Pacific on TSN2. And Monday, Canada's number one trade deadline show comes your way. James Duffy, Bob McKenzie, Darren Dreger, and Pierre Lebrun all bring you comprehensive coverage of every story, every trade, from every angle and platform all day coverage of Trade Center beginning at 8 a.m. Eastern, 5 a.m. Pacific across the TSN network. We've got your speed skating finals when we come back. The Red Deer 2019 Canada Winter Games are presented by Nova Chemicals, developing and manufacturing chemicals and plastic resins that make everyday life safer, healthier, and easier. By Hotels Red Deer, working as one to create a better destination experience. By IFR Workwear, family is your priority, your workwear is ours. By On The Run, proud sponsor of the Canada Winter Games. On The Run, making the most of every stop and by Travel Alberta, wander within reach this winter. Welcome back to the Gary W. Harris Canada Games Center in Red Deer as we work our way towards some medals being dished out here in the 1,000 meter short track. We're gonna get to the women's finals and how this is going to work. We've got our 44D final, we've got our 44C final, and we've got our B final here before we get to the actual final for gold, silver, and bronze. Uh, so Susan, tell me a little bit about why they've gone to this format and how it helps these skaters to just get another skate in here. Well, it really is a launching pad, as I said, for future skaters. Some of these skaters, this will be the highlight of their careers, and they need to be able to race many races at the Canada Games, not just one race, which is a heat. Now we have repishages and further finals for every skater uh, that comes to the Canada Games. And these are the higher finals. The lower finals were already done earlier today. So this next race is the D final, which is still top 25 skaters. Jane Green. Mother was a racer? Yes, her mother was an Olympic medalist in short track speed skating, a young phenom at the age of 15, going to the first Olympics in short track in Calgary in 88, and then going on to, uh, to two more Olympic games after that. Two Go skaters out of British Columbia, including Green, in the inside lane. Ready? And they'll move ahead here in our D final. And a little bit of a 
slow start there on the first turn. And Two British Columbia skaters in this race, so if they skate this smart and together, they could actually control this race from the front. Dana Valentine, quite a good skater, and in this final should really have no problem um, moving to the front. She's sitting comfortably in second place with uh, with Sherilyn Chung sitting in the in the front. Chung out of BC in first place here as they come through now with six laps to go and Valentine sitting there in the second spot followed by BC's Jane Green and Jenna Larder of Prince Edward Island in fourth right now. Not, a, not a lot of skaters from PEI. Not a lot of skaters from PEI, so this is a really great accomplishment for Jenna Larder to get into these upper finals. This race has really picked up in speed now and still sitting at the front, Sherilyn Chung with Dana Ballantyne sitting in second. Chung finished ninth in the 500 meters out of Coquitlam in British Columbia and she will lead here now with two laps to go and following in behind there, Dana Ballantyne. Chung now as they hear the bell for the final lap and a good push here from Jenna Larder sliding up but Chung still hanging on to the top spot in our D final, and she will cross the finish line in first. It'll be Valentine in second. And a nice push there from Jenna Larder to make things interesting for that second place finish in our D final. And you can see how these races have really slowed down from the heats because skaters don't need to qualify a top fastest time. So. It's really all tactics in this race right now. The longer distance skaters will take out the race a little faster to try to drop the sprinters, and uh, and uh, the sprinters will just try to sit in behind. So is that something we'll see for the C and B finals as well? It's kind of similar sort of strategy? It'll absolutely be raced on tactics and with no worries about the time. We will set up our C final here as well. Just four skaters in the D final. There will be five skaters in the C final. Elliot Ganass out of Manitoba, a couple of Alberta skaters out there as well, including Victoria Goplin and Mika Sun from Ontario, Angela Zhu out of New Brunswick. It will be Ganass on lane one. Ready? And first in to that opening turn there is Angela Zhu from New Brunswick, and she'll head to the front of the pack. And we are actually missing a skater here, so someone has withdrawn from this race. Mika Sun is not on the ice right now. And in the lead, we have Angela Zhu taking it out very slowly. You can see these lap times are very slow, so skaters really racing a tactical race. Lap times over 13 seconds, opening lap over 15 seconds. And if you're going to go like a, four laps left, three laps left, when do you really kind of open it up a little bit at the end? Yeah, with only four skaters here, they are uh, just waiting their time. Here we go. Um, usually it's four laps to go. This is a little bit early with Caitlin Peckley taking the lead, but two Alberta skaters sitting out in front. That gives them a little bit of control. We have a pass now with Victoria Goplin now taking the lead. Goplin in the top spot, fellow Albertan. Caitlin Pelkey in the number two spot here. Now with three laps to go, and Goplin opening things up a little bit for herself. A nice cushion at the front of this four pack. Goplin now has really taken this race over. We might have a decent competition for second place. Some pressure there by Ganass. Couldn't get on the inside just yet as we hit our final lap in the C final. And it'll be a victory lap for Victoria Goplin as she is going to cruise here to a C final championship. We'll see if there's a little bit of a push on the inside, but a good job there to make it a one-two finish in the C final for Alberta from Caitlin Pelkey. Great race for all these skaters. Skaters are allowed to move over in a lane as long as they don't 
impede another skater. You can't tackle someone when they are <laughs> trying to pass you. Elliot Ganass really may, trying for a really good pass. Here is uh, Victoria Goplin or Caitlin Pelkey taking the lead there. And Victoria Goplin now clear out in front, really with a, an easy lead to the end of this race. And right at the end, we saw Pelkey kind of just scoot over a little bit to the left to make sure that Ganass could not take second from her in the C final. Here is a look at your women's B final in the short track 1000. And an interesting story here for He Won Sun, who actually had the fourth fastest time in the semifinals, but didn't advance to the final because her heat was so fast, she finished fourth in her heat, but she had a very nice time. So she's got the one lane here and probably the favorite. In fact, she's not out here though right now. It's, there's just four skaters and he won son is not one of Go them. Go to the start. Ready. So the number two on the second lane there was Leia Tessier, and now she'll be in third here as Sylvia Polizajic from Ontario out to the top of the lead at a much quicker pace at the start of this race, Susan. Absolutely, this is a much faster race. Somebody who is out at the front really wants to just stay clear, so this is... Uh... Leah Tessier sitting at the front being passed now by Ren Acorn, who is who is taking an easy lead. Now oh, Tessier back to the front here. Acorn following in behind her. Tessier, the Quebec skater. There'll be four Quebec women in our A final for a gold medal in a few moments here in Red Deer. Right now, Tessier. And we've got a fall at the back of the pack. That was a 14-year-old, Cesara Bear. And while these finals are really important, they, these skaters all have another race coming up tomorrow, a 3,000-meter points race and a relay for their province. So some skaters may just opt to withdraw because there is no overall prize. Final lap in our B final here. And it's a two-horse race at the front of this pack. Leia Tessier being watched very closely there by Red Acorn, and they will finish 1-2 in your women's B final and fifth and sixth place finishes for them here at the Canada Games. For Tessier, she was sixth in the 500, ninth in the 1500, so three top 10 fi finishes for Leia Tessier out of Blainville, Quebec. And Acorn likely happy with her sixth place finish out of the Northwest Territories. Her best so far in these games have been a 14th finish in the 1500 meters. Now we are going to flip over and go through our D, C, and B finals in the men's 1000 meters. And then at the end of the broadcast, we will have your women's and men's A final, which of course will be for the gold, silver, and bronze here in the one thousand meters and we have Matte Peterson in this race he of course had an unfortunate fall this is his favorite race he withdrew himself from the 500 yesterday because he was feeling sick and so he is going to get out in this race and see what he can do for the final to get as many points as he possibly can to rank as high as he can in this race and the final rankings even though not resulting in an overall position do matter to Canadian skaters. This is all the juniors in the country racing here at the Canada Games. And and so the rankings will be looked at by anyone trying to, you know, encourage some of these next-gen skaters to train at their facilities. Six of them on the start list. And Peterson getting a round of applause from an Alberta crowd here. And six of them ready at the starting line for our men's D final here at the 2019 Canada Games Go in Red line. Deer. Ready. Ah. 
So you can see the tactics in this race. There's only one <laughs> skater who actually started. The rest just kind of walked off the line. It was Dalton McLeod from the Northwest Territories who was the one who jumped a little bit off the line and now everybody else will fall in line behind him. McLeod still, as we work our way through the first couple of laps in the lead, Marshall Shoup of British Columbia settling in behind him and Andrew Binns of Prince Edward Island. Another PEI skater here in number three right now. Now he's gonna slide on the inside and try to move ahead, but still in three as they come around the turn. Yes, great showing from PEI to have a skater in each of the men's and women's top 25 skaters. That's a great accomplishment. They have very few skaters in PEI. Three great coaching. Three British Columbia skaters, and they are one, two, three. Now one, two, four as they head in to the turn with three laps to go. Marshall Shoup leading the way by a significant margin, followed there by Keenan St. Rose in number two. Now he's passed on the inside by Matt A. Peterson. Peterson's gonna go on a big push here. He just came flying past the field as he tries to work his way to a D final championship. He's got the lead as the bell rings for the final lap here in front of the pro Alberta crowd. And Peterson, after a fall in the semis, will easily cruise to a D final championship with a time of 133.169. Really great to see the attitude, the good attitude by Matty Peterson to be out on this ice and racing for this race. Here's a look at our start. <laughs> <laughs> and they clearly did not want to take the lead. Only one skater was willing to actually start race off the line. And here's Mate Peterson skating pretty easily. He's really out skating this, this group of skaters. He was, of course, at the Junior Worlds this year and, and did really well, competed well with the rest of the world, world's juniors. He doesn't find himself in many D finals very often, so that was one that he probably expected to win as easily as he did. Now we will get to our C final for the men. Nathan Thomas out of Alberta. Benjamin Cote out of Alberta as well. A New Brunswick skater, a Quebec skater, and a Bennett Lai out of Ontario in the fifth lane, and all five skaters are out here for the C final. Go to the start. Red. A little bit quicker with this start. And that'll be Nathan Thomas. And a quick push on the outside there from Bennett Lai. And he'll settle into the first spot here as we work our way through the early stages of our C final. And Bennett Lai really setting a nice, easy, comfortable pace. That was a good move by Nathan Thomas to get out in front and just let a couple people pass him so he can sit here comfortably in third place. Now a quick push inside there by Felix Roussel. Roussel cutting wide and remaining in the lead as they head into the turn. He's gonna get a push there and a pass from Anthony cormier luce And there goes Nathan Thomas out in first with five laps to go, really picking up the pace. Felix Roussel from Quebec is, is sitting now in second and the speed has really picked up. These lap times are amazing. Things really separating here now. We've got lap times under nine seconds. As Thomas tries to hold on to a lead, he's going to be pushed here by Felix Roussel of Quebec. Now Roussel pushes ahead in your C final with two laps to go, and it'll be Roussel in the lead being chased by Thomas. As they hit the bell for the final lap, Felix Roussel of Quebec in the lead, followed by Nathan Thomas of Alberta, and that is how they'll finish 1-2, and Anthony cormier Luce of New Brunswick will finish third in your men's C final here in the 1,000 meters. I like the pace to that one, though. That was a good C final. That was a great pace, a lot of racing, a lot of jostling back and forth, and that gets tiring for the skaters to back up and speed up, pick the pace up again. So here we can see Bennett Lai 
out easily in front, but you can see the moves happening in behind and they really have to be aware when they hear a sound or if their coaches are yelling, they need to uh, make sure they react to that very quickly. How much communication is there from the coaches just on the side here? It's hard to react to the coaches. Yeah. Often you can't hear them, so you have to really keep your ears open or feel for around you. And you can see some of the skaters shoulder checking to see what was happening behind them, but definitely the coaching can help. There is a look at what we've got set here for your B final. Felix Pigeon out of Quebec will be on the inside lane to start things. Three Ontario skaters here as well. It's Sebastian Champagne, Connor Rogerson, and Kitts Richards. Tyler McGee out of New Brunswick in the middle of this pack of five as they get ready to move to the start line. Go to the start. Red. Quick start here as Pijan will take off right away, trying to extend an early lead. This is unlike anything we've seen so far in these well, finals. Yeah, Felix Pijan is very confident in this race. He is really above a lot of these skaters. He skated at the Junior Worlds this year. He is strong. He skates easily at this speed, and maybe he wants to get a Canada Games record here, but he is comfortably in the lead right now. He has taken off. Ooh, and a big crash on the near side, but bouncing right back up is Kitts Richards. Nobody has come even close here to Felix Pigeon with four and a half laps to go. I don't, I don't Tyler think he's McGee touch. really uh, making an effort to catch up here, closing the gap just a little bit, but everybody had to react to Felix Pigeon, and, and Felix still out in the lead, three laps to go. He's going to fly by Sebastian Champagne, who fallen. Three skaters remain in the mix here, led the entire way right off the start by Felix Pigeon. One and a half laps to go. And passing when you're tired is pretty hard, so Tyler B McGee uh, making an effort here, but he's also struggling a little here around the final corner. Pejan will come over the line for the time of 127.692. A decent push, though, from McGee. Uh, but I, I mean, Pejan, that's the first time we've seen it. Right off the bat, went out, had a significant lead, and hung on to it the entire way. That was a great effort from him. Sometimes when you go from the gun, you just stay out of trouble and, and uh, the race is actually a little bit easier without all the jostling around in the back. Especially if you're at a little bit of a level above the competition. And I think that's what we saw there from Felix Pijan. Coming up, two more races here in Red Deer. A gold medal for both the men and the women at 1,000 meters. We'll be back to short track momentarily. Welcome back one last time here to Red Deer, Gary W. Harris Canada Games Center, and we are ready for your men's and women's A finals for a gold medal. And for many of these young athletes, the biggest stage they've been on, for some of them, maybe the biggest stage they'll ever be on. And what's going through their mind right now? How are they controlling the nerves, Susan? Well, these skaters are focused. Uh, nerves help when you control them and when you use them to to get more adrenaline and be better. And so these girls all have a lot of experience at high level racing, especially Claudia Heaney, who won a bronze medal at the Junior Worlds earlier this year in this race. Claudia Heaney out of Ontario will have the inside lane here. She set a Canada Games record earlier today, a Canadian record. And I mean, we've seen a number of records fall so far here. Right now, she is the current holder. Does that change here in the final? We are not sure, but she's from Ontario. The four other skaters are from Quebec. And when you talk about team skating, like you've mentioned a little bit through the broadcast here today, how much of an advantage or maybe disadvantage is it for uh, Claudia Heaney? Well, Claudia trains with these skaters all year at the CRCE in uh, this, the regional training center in Montreal. So she knows them very, very well. And she will know how each one of these skaters skates. They're teammates to her yeah. when she's at the center. Now she's racing for Ontario. 
Roxanne Beaudry, you see four Quebec skaters. You'll be able to tell the difference by the colors on their helmets. Roxanne Beaudry will be in lane number two to start the race. Juliette Brindamore, and we talked about it right at the top of the broadcast. You mentioned a couple of names to watch here. Juliette Brindamore is one of them. Claudia Heaney was the other. Um, is there a significant favorite in your mind in this race? Or, I mean, from what I've seen today, all five of these women can really skate. Yeah, I would not want to make a guess here. I think this will be a really great race coming up. Claudia Heaney obviously likes the 1,000 meters. She's had some success at it this year already, but Julia Brindamore has really had a really great Canada game so far with two medals in the last two races. Brindamore with a 500 meter bronze and a gold in the 1500. Heaney with a silver in the 500 meter. And Beaudry with a bronze Go to the start. in the 1500 meter. Ready. Gold medal up for grabs in the 1,000 meter short track race here at the Canada Games. Five women set the battle for it. And Claudia Heaney sitting in a really great position in second right now. She's not wasting all of her energy, but Julia Brindamore will be watching her. She's now moved around on the outside. This really, I think, will be a race between Brindamore and Heaney. And that's what we've got right now. It's Brindamore in the top spot, followed closely by Heaney. Now sliding up there, Killian Kavion. Ooh, that was a pretty risky pass. Skaters need to be actually ahead of the person they're passing in order to not be caught, have a call against them. But the judges, the referees don't look like they're looking at that. So she's probably clear here, but sitting out in the front, Julia Brindamore, and sitting in second, Kaylin Kavion. And Heaney is now dropped back to fourth in behind three Quebec skaters as the pace picks up with three and a half laps to go. Juliette Brindamore in the lead. Kavion in behind her and Roxanne Beaudry sitting in third. And we'll see if Claudia Heaney can make a move here. And Juliette Brindamore sitting strongly out in front. She really has been a powerhouse in this competition. And Claudia Heaney now going down in the corner. Heaney. It's a big disappointment for her. Heaney slips and falls. It'll be a race four-way here for Quebec for gold medal at the Canada Games. And Juliette Brindamore gets it done again. Three medals for Brindamore here in Red Deer as Juliette Brindamore continues to dominate short track here at the Canada Games. With a close race for second between uh, Roxanne Beaudry and Kaylin Kavion. We'll see what the final finish is, but I believe Roxanne Beaudry coming second and Kaylin Kavion finishing with the bronze medal. A good look here from Brenda Moore, who when she needed to be at the front, she was. And a really close race for second and third in times. 139.556 for oh. Roxanne Beaudry and 139.563 for Kaylian Kavion. And even fourth place, not too much farther behind as well. So for Juliette Brindamore, a gold in the 1,000, a gold in the 1,500, a bronze in the 500. And for people who will be watching Canadian Olympics in the future, that's a name we'll probably see again, isn't it, Susan? Absolutely. Julia Brindamore, a uh, medal in every race she's raced in so far. Bursting onto the scene here in Red Deer was Juliette Brindamore out of Quebec. And now we move to our men's final. And three Quebec skaters and two skaters from the home province here of Alberta for the Canada Games. Manuel Filardo will be standing next to William D'Angino, who has gold in the 500 and gold in the 1500, skating out of Sherbrooke, Quebec. And that's obviously a guy that we'll be watching to see if it can be a triple gold here for D'Angino. Filardo will be on the inside lane. And he had a time of 126.374, which was a Canadian record. A Canada Games record, yeah. So he has both Canada Games records right now, the 1500 meter and the 1000 meter. William Dagenaud, like we mentioned, double gold already. 
He'll be in the second lane, and he'll be followed by Brendan Yamada. Yamada set a Canadian record earlier in the day. He'll be skating for Alberta out of Calgary. He had a bronze in the 500 meter and finished fifth in the 1500 meter. Our next skater, Nicola Perot, silver in 500, silver in 1500. So Dagenaud and Perot, gold and silver in both events for them so far. And our number five skater, Matthias Bates, out of Alberta as well. Bates skates out of Calgary's best result here so far, ninth in the 1500s as they get set to move to the line in this gold medal skate. Red. And right off the bats, hustling up the line there, Manuel Pilardo takes over top spot. Yamada from the outside now moves into first place. And Nicola Perro making sure he's at the front this time and not having to work from the very back of the pack like he did in some of the heats. Alberta on two and three there momentarily. William Dagenaud, double gold medalist already, trying to find some room. Now he's gonna slide in to third place with five laps to go. And with three skaters from Quebec at the front, it's uh, time for the Alberta skaters to make a move if they're wanting to penetrate into the, into the lead of the three Quebec skaters. Three and a half laps now, three laps remaining in this gold medal skate for the men at 1,000, still leading the way. Pilardo, now Dagenaud trying to move on the inside and he'll get a step almost, but Pilardo able to fend him off now with two laps to go. Oh. Sliding on the inside, Nicola Perot now for Quebec. He'll have the lead as we hit the final lap. Perot in the lead, trying to hang on. He's gonna be pushed here by William Dagenaud as they come around the final turn. Will it be triple goal for Dagenaud? No! Nicholas Perot gets the job done with a time of 127, 325, denying a third gold medal for his fellow Quebec skater, William Dagenaud. But an excellent finish. And three medals now for each of those contestants here at the Canada Games. Well, and there was a really uh, questionable pass by um, Brendan Yamada, really tried to pass Manuel Falardo in the straightaway. And Manuel Falardo came right out of his lane. Here you can see the three Quebec skaters line lined up beside each other and they just changed places. And here you see the questionable pass. You're allowed to move over in your lane, but you're not allowed to touch or impede another skater while you're doing that. And it looked to me like Manuel Falardo. Can I put his left arm out? Really, yeah. yeah, tried to stop the other skater physically from getting by. And here you can see they're looking at the video replay, thinking about what they will be doing. That was a great look. Turn the monitor right around here for our officials. Now, if they do rule that, Yamada would finish third. Is that how Yamada it would, would, would win the medal, and Felardo uh, would be penalized. Yamada does have a bronze in the 500 meter. Here's another look. What do you think? Yeah, the arm, I think, is less bad than this part where he went sideways. You're not allowed, you are allowed to come out of your lane. You're supposed to hold your lane, but it, you can come out of, oh yeah, he really did grab him there. Well, we'll have to see what the referees decide. They have the final say at the end and they are much more uh, qualified to make this call than I am, but uh, I would say that was a, that was a, that was an impeding. What we do know is that it's not gonna change anything for Nicola Perot, 127.013 for the gold medal. William Dagenaud, a silver medal for Quebec as well. Two golds and a silver for him.
And it looks to me like it will be one, two, three for Quebec. Well, disappointed Alberta skaters, that's for sure. But Nicolas Perrault with the gold medal, great skate for him. William Dangino in second, and Manuel Fellardo, who led most of this race in third place. Nicolas Perrault, the gold, but it was a sweep in the men's 1,000 meter short track for the powerhouse of Quebec. the Gary W. Harris Canada Games Center medals handed out in the thousand meters speed skating finals. As we welcome you back inside the TSN studios, we hope you enjoyed the finals coverage. In other news, an initiative that has been going on in Red Deer has been Dealing with the weather, it's been pretty cold and chilly in Red Deer, Alberta, but not a lot of people have access to mittens. For more on this initiative, let's go to Paul Hollingsworth. We've seen it before, we are seeing it again. Every four years at a Canada Games, programs are announced that connect the community to the games in general. This year, the Mitts for Many program was announced in Red Deer, Alberta. It supports the Mustard Seed, a Red Deer charity that supports homeless people. The construct of Mitzvah Many is pretty simple. Everybody has a chance to be involved, from the athletes to the spectators and all in between. They're encouraged to donate their mittens, put them in a box, and those mittens will go to support homeless people living in this area. For those who can't afford warm clothing or don't have access to proper shelter, the cold is, is more than that. It's an excruciating experience and sometimes it can be deadly. So the fact of the matter is, is that mitts don't just warm hands, they, they warm hearts. And, and this kind of uh, gift demonstrates to people who are struggling that the people in the community with which, uh, or in which they live do care and know that they matter. So this is one of the, the greatest legacies of games that happens. We, we try to encourage athletes from across the country to get involved in various charities and events. This one was the Mitzvah for Many that was initiated by the Red Deer Committee and it supports the Mustard Seed Group. And as you've seen this morning, thousands of mitts are being donated to help the less fortunate in our society. Mitts for Many is not just about Red Deer and it's not just about 2019. It's a legacy piece, not a bricks and mortar legacy, but a social legacy. This sort of event will continue going forward. They'll make donations similar to this at future Canada Games, helping people who need comfort and care, especially in the brutally cold winters in Canada. Reporting from the 2019 Canada Winter Games, I'm Paul Hollingsworth. And the game's hoping to pay it forward everywhere that they stop. Here's some results from Wednesday as BC's Jonathan Hanna claiming bronze in the 75 kilogram weight class in boxing. With more, let's go to Paul Hollingsworth. BC's Jonathan Hanna packs the heaviest of heavy punches. In the ring, it's his defining attribute. Ever since I was a little kid, I always wanted to be really good at something. Hannah is better than good. He's a medal favorite in Red Deer. He came here to win, and he spent several years preparing for this moment. He pulls something out from inside him that I, that I haven't seen in a lot of athletes. And just like a multi-sport athlete, Hannah has also found a niche away from boxing. He's kind, uh, he's compassionate, uh, he works with kids. He's a young man who not only pushes himself to be a good boxer, but also a good person. Mostly because of my faith, like I'm a Christian, so it's like important to go and help others. In 2016, Hannah, through his church, traveled to Mexico to help those less fortunate. When he arrived, he got busy. He went to work, helping to improve living conditions. Just help build some new buildings and a few things for them. He came away from the experience more aware of the suffering felt by others. People complain about like not getting their iPad Right, and it's like, oh, the world's going to end. And then those kids grow up maybe not eating every day, and you're just like, hey, they survive, and they live, and they go through life, and they're just fortunate and happy to get three meals a day. Last year, Hannah went back to Mexico with his fellow boxers from Griffin's Boxing and Fitness in North Vancouver. Come on, man. Come on, work. 
And once again, he found time to help the people living in the local community. Just helping people in general, just daily basis being kind, helping out people, just normal acts of kindness. It's kind of just what you're called to do as a Christian. His experiences in Mexico have changed him. They've given him perspective. The hard work and dedication definitely is something that translates to a lot of the things I do. Hannah says he's more focused than ever and better prepared for the challenges in the ring and in life as he continues his developmental path as a boxer. The Red Deer 2019 Canada Winter Games are presented by Nova Chemicals. Everyone agrees plastics do not agree with our oceans, rivers, or anywhere in the environment. Please be responsible while enjoying the games. By Finning Canada, proud partner of the Canada Winter Games and our athletes. By Driving Force, vehicle rentals, sales, and leasing. Proud to be the fleet provider for Canada's Winter Games. By Atco, proud sponsor and official energy provider of the 2019 Canada Winter Games. And by the Government of Canada, proud supporter of the 2019 Canada Winter Games. I'm Tyson Langlar and I'm from Manitoba. I just won gold medal in the mass start. You're watching the Canada Winter Games on TSN. And let's get to that action in which he did win. Now we go to long track speed skating. The men's mass start at the Great Chief Park. 30 different racers lined up for this race. In lap eight, the leaders began to pull away from the pack as Tyson Langular of Manitoba continued to have success. He finished the race in five minutes and 44 seconds. That good enough to claim his fourth gold medal and fifth medal overall. Well, Kentuck still with a commanding lead as we look at our medals leader total, 63 total, 23 gold medals. And as we look to day two, or page two rather, on the medals board today. Saskatchewan picked up their first medal. It's a gold medal win for Logan Pletz in the men's 12 and a half kilometer by Athlon. Logan from Regina. Well, tomorrow we have got day eight coverage for you. The men's hockey final that you can watch on TSN 2 at 9.30 p.m. Eastern, 6.30 Pacific. We hope you enjoyed today's action. We'll be back again tomorrow for the men's hockey final.